well, we do agree that uh, the European uh, emergency package, which, uh, let's be honest here, that hasn't been hammered and fully agreed among all members as yet, but it's a, it's a very interesting initial step and a very interesting initial plan. But that was one important catalyst here. But as you correctly mentioned, uh, European economies are making their way, some of them are actually making their way at a faster pace into some sort of uh, economic recovery as you know, parts of the economy come back to activity. And uh, knowing that, and it's something that we highlighted many times in our recent notes, uh, that economic sentiment in Europe got absolutely hammered a lot more than uh, its uh, uh, U.S. equivalent. So sentiment in Europe was so depressed. Um, and in this moment, a moment of, you know, uh, easing of lockdown, some parts of the economy coming back, it doesn't surprise us to see um, some degree of euro upside. We actually believe that there's a little bit more to go. All right, so that's not the end of the run then, 113 versus the dollar. You are head of Asimia FX, so looking at a lot of emerging market currencies, what does this upside in the euro mean for emerging market assets? It means a lot, especially for the high yielders, uh, the, the South African rands of the world, the Russian ruble of the world. And, and these currencies, uh, there are several aspects, but uh, I would highlight two. Here is the dollar broad uh, um, move, which obviously Euro upside is uh, historically a, a very important relief. Uh, two EM high yielding currencies. And the second is the fact that, I mean, that in a way makes the bond trade even more interesting um, in these economies where you still have some degree of stiffness in the curve and you could add, argue that central banks still have some space uh, to cut rates. So there's a very interesting uh, positive link between international flows into bonds and currency appreciation in this economy. So this is amazing news uh, for, you know, some of these high yielders in my region. Lewis, my friend, back in ancient history, let's call it 2019, you and I and the others used to argue and worry about current account deficits and debt loads. Is that just so passe now? When are we ever going to start worrying about current account deficits and debt loads again in terms of our investment criteria? Or is that just not worth even thinking about at the moment? Hi, Steve. I think you are touching on a very important point, especially uh, the latter, uh, cur uh, you know, the debt uh, or, or, or short-term debt loads. Um, I do believe that this is probably going to become a little bit more of an important variable driving short-term price action in the coming uh, months. Um, we know that uh, as a response uh, to a, a short drop in sentiment, especially when it comes to highly impoverished countries, there has been some reaction by multilateral agencies, the IMF of the world, the World Bank, you know, regional multilateral agencies. Um, there has been some appeal uh, uh, to that. But uh, we know that, I mean, this is probably not the end. Uh, and, and, and it's interesting to see that some of these economies, uh, if you take, take a look in sub-Saharan African economies, for example, they believe that they are absolutely fine for now. They don't need to come to the market to new bonds, which is probably a little bit of an illusion that so we might have uh, a redux of this story as we go into end of 2020 and beginning of 2021. Uh, the former, which is the current account situation, the interesting thing now, Steve, is that, I mean, since the gap down in domestic demand was so severe, this is giving, obviously, a huge hit in import growth which in a way creates a, a little bit of a, a rebalancing of current account. So what we are seeing now, we are seeing, you know, uh, less uh, acute current account gap uh, in some of these economies. I mean, South Africa is, is a template where we might get, you know, half a percentage point of the current account gap this year compared to three, three and a half percent last year. So this is giving a little bit of relief to the currencies, but it might come back to bite once, you know, underlying growth picks up once again.